Hi, this is uh, going to be a quick tutorial. It's kind of uh, a user request on here. Um, you see this little guy here, this little Lego head guy, and I had a user on here ask me um, after he watched some of uh, my alpha masks and Photoshop and everything how to uh, create this little guy. Now there's a lot of simple methods and everything, but I'm actually going to demonstrate in this tutorial um, kind of a, I don't want to say advanced, but a, a method of using the alpha masks for creating a decal or adding detail on top of existing geometry and using transparency to kind of help with that. And um, it's something that's a little different than say your standard uh, transparency, alpha transparency fence or you know anything else using alpha transparency. This is kind of like the old school decaling method of bullet holes and walls and games. Um, so this is a little head that he was having an issue with and I mean we could have basically probably could have projected this little face onto it or just mapped a yellow texture into it that had this little face on it but we're gonna show a way to do it with uh, an alpha mask. So in Photoshop here I basically he's um he's just he has black eyes and a black mouth on our picture here so inside of Photoshop basically we just have a black document and then in the alpha channel I just painted a couple of the eyeballs white and um, the mouth white and this is down here creating an extra alpha channel by hitting this little new new layer button here and so I saved that out and of course like in the other tutorials I uh, saved it to my desktop in a just a new folder folder and I called it Lego Man TGA down here the Targa and uh, made sure alpha channels was checked you know hit saved made sure 32 bits of pixel was checked so it saves out this transparency alpha layer and so we had our we have our texture uh, inside of Maya we made a little Lego piece kind of similar to the one in this image here and I'm gonna demonstrate my technique for kind of decaling alpha transparency on top of um, objects that aren't flat like a fence is flat you know like a plane but this is kind of like on a curved object so basically what I do to get my alpha transparency to map an overlay on like a rounded object and this works on pretty much anything and I've used it in several uh, Nintendo DS games so what I do is I'm gonna take this piece I have here and I'm gonna hit control D I have multiple copies of it now I'm gonna go show isolate select view selected and it's just gonna be by itself I'm gonna look at it I'm gonna go back I'm gonna say alright I want my face um, just kinda like right here so I'm gonna select my faces on the geometry here you can see my face selection I hope um, for where I want the face to appear and um, normally I have a shortcut key for this but I'm gonna go edit invert selection and it selects everything but that little area I selected I'm gonna hit the delete key and basically it deleted everything but the little section where I want my face and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to vertex mode I held down right mouse button and then went over to vertex my marking menus don't seem to be showing up in the video capture so if you didn't see what I was doing there it's just holding down right mouse button and then going over to the left here over vertex and it should have all the vertex and just select all of them with those selected make sure you have the w, w key for a move and go modify transformation tools move, move normal tool this is pretty cool little thing here you have move you can move these in the U you can move these in the V and what we want to do is move them in the normal down out the normal with the in see the little in there so I'm gonna go show isolate select and uncheck that so we can see our old geometry and our new geometry and then what I'm gonna do is kinda go to the side just a little bit I'm gonna grab this bar that has the in on it for moving out on the normal and I'm actually just gonna pull out a little bit of hair to where I don't see any Z fighting or weird flickering or anything and now I have my little piece I'm gonna delete history center the pivot and freeze transforms and I have my little piece um, over top of the where I want my face over top of the base uh, Lego piece so I'm gonna go window rendering editors hypershade and I'm gonna create a new material we're just gonna call it a, just a Lambert and I'm gonna go into the color here in the checker box click that I'm gonna map in a file texture right here file and then in this little uh, folder right here I'm gonna go find my texture and I'm gonna go to my desktop new folder where I put it Lego man TGA I'm gonna hit open with that done I'm gonna close that box and then I'm gonna look in here 
I'm gonna oh. okay. And it's Lambert three. I didn't name it properly, so we'll just name it face. I didn't name it when I created it, and that's a no no. So now I can look in here and see its face. So I'm gonna hold down middle mouse button, and I'm gonna see a little plus sign pop up on my mouse, and I'm gonna drag it onto this little piece here in the front where I want the face. Now I want to make sure on the keyboard the 6 key is hit. 6 is show textures. Um, the 5 key is just shaded with no textures. So make sure you hit the 6 key on your keyboard so you see in your textures. Now I want to go Window, UV Texture Editor, and just take a look here and I'll see that my UVs for the big piece aren't really laid out properly yet all the way. And my little piece, they're just a little thin sliver right here. So we need to do some UVs on this piece right now. And basically, I just want to planar map some UVs here down the, the blue Z-axis. So I'm going to go Create UVs, Planar Map Options. And I'm just going to set it to Best Plane is fine. Um, Z-axis is fine. And I'm not going to adjust any of these other settings. In fact, I'll go Edit Reset. We'll do, we can even leave it bounding box too. That's fine as long as it's set for Z-axis. I'm just going to hit Apply. And there a little face showed up and the reason it showed up was the UVs are properly projected here in the UV texture editor. You'll see them all perfectly, see, lined up in here. So I'm going to scale the face up just a little bit. And now I'm going to close that. We can take a look. My face is actually a little too big compared to my reference, it's a little tiny face. But you can see that I have let me try to move it out of the way. We have the big solid Lego piece, and then we have basically, we can't see it because the shading, back face culling is on. There you go. And then we have the little face for him, and they're kind of two separate pieces. Now, this can kind of help you um, if you separate some of this geometry. Um, like if I was to select these faces down here and just uh, go, uh, I'm having a rain fart here, mesh separate there it'll separate them I just did it with a shortcut and basically can do cool things like move the mouth up and down and I could um, grab some vertices and we could actually probably animate him talking so we have like more than one piece now you know his eyes are on separate pieces his mouth's on separate pieces and you can go in and optimize it too and kind of delete like select that face in the middle and kind of delete it and now he has like you know, a couple different eyeballs here where you could tweak them out. Or, if you don't really need all that capability, I'm zing back here. Sorry about this crude method. Um, you can just select it. The piece in the background, they're both selected, and go mesh, combine. And sometimes that happens. Not a big deal. Just select the, sometimes you lose your assignments of materials when, when you combine. It's glitchy. Just reselect the faces for the face. Not a big deal. And um, hold down right mouse button like I'm doing and go assign existing material and just reassign the face back to it. Hmm. That's strange. It's making me a liar. Window, rendering, hypershade. Since you guys probably couldn't see my marking menus. And I'll just drag a face onto it. Make sure I'm hitting the six key. Make sure transforms and history is deleted. Hmm. That's strange. Well, and the strange thing is, I'm selecting some of it and trying to pull it out. Man, you just don't see it at all. Well, let's go mesh, separate. Oh, beautiful. Okay. And then color, apply color options, and hit apply. We'll make it yellow again. There we are. Well, as you just noticed, combining and separating and all that jazz is sometimes uh, problematic. Another workaround for it is, is to select the face part select the body part and hit control G and hold on and now they're kind of grouped together if we go window outliner 
and we look at them they're grouped together now so you can just select it and move them around as one piece if you don't want the eyeballs like you know and then you can go in there and look at the groups I double grouped them accidentally and see that it's actually still two pieces too um, so that's actually how you would do that I'm sorry about the glitch um, with the combining but that happens that's happened to me daily in production on games um, just with massive amounts of environment geometry too so I mean this is at least something small and manageable but I've had um, sections of environment geometry just combining them you know like 30 plus pieces of foliage and and all of it just losing its material assignments like that and glitching out and it's just Maya you gotta figure out a workaround so I hope this helps some other people and the person who requested this video.